I'm Kok Chi Wai. I'm the head of banking and finance with Allen and Gladhill. Allen and Gladhill has one of the largest network of law firms in the region, and we are well known for our strength in the area of banking and finance. Our work spans the full gamut from bilateral loans, real estate financing, to more complicated structures such as threat financing, leverage financing, and more recently, uh, capital core financing. And we are also involved, especially in our Malaysian office, in Islamic financing. Over the years, we have gained a reputation in the industry, not only as a reliable part of core when it comes to large-scale financial transactions, but also as the go-to source of advice for transactions that are complex and require innovative solutions. I would say that one of the main strengths of our practice of our firm is the extremely close relationship that is shared across our offices in each of the jurisdictions in ASEAN and being able to work together seamlessly across the jurisdictions allow us to constantly keep abreast of the changes that occur in each jurisdiction, taking into account the relevant and different regulatory limitations. This is particularly pertinent when we are talking about issues such as the taking of security and different structures that may be available to the client in order to take into account restrictions on offshore borrowing, for example. So all in all, our practice spans the full gamut across the key jurisdictions in the region. The truth is that interest in ESG and by corollary, the sustainable financing, it has been growing for many years now. And we are certain that it will continue to grow as investors become more aware of the decisions and the impact of, uh, on the environment and the sustainability of their business. But what has accelerated the adoption of ESG and sustainable finance has been the pandemic and has brought home to many people in the business community of the large scale impact on not just the economy, but on society as a whole. And um, as a result, this has led to great interest in the idea of building sustainable businesses that can weather the effects of these large scale events. On our side, we have been busy advising clients as well as um, financial institutions on different ways to navigate the regulations, the many regulations that are beginning to take shape on ESG. On the financing space, we are seeing increasingly seeing a lot of uh, so-called green loans as well as sustainable financing, where structures are in place to incentivize the companies or the borrowers uh, to act in a way that uh, will have a positive impact on, on the sustainability of, of their business. I will ask my fellow uh, partner, Asma, to say a few things on the scene in Malaysia. Uh, by way of introduction, my name is Azman bin Osman Luk, and I'm the managing partner of Ramat Limit Partners, which is the affiliate firm of Allen & Gladhill uh, in Malaysia. The past year has actually been a landmark year for the firm in terms of ESG-related matters. And in fact, more than half in value of all finance transactions handled by the firm in the past year have been ESG or sustainability linked. So this trend in Malaysia has actually been driven not just by the client's commercial requirements, but also by the regulators. And we foresee this trend continuing this year and beyond as the regulators move slowly beyond issuing general guidance principles on policies to imposing more hardline requirements. So for Malaysia, I would say we foresee a large proportion of our transactions. Uh, in fact, an ever growing proportion of our transactions will be ESG linked. And because ESG is so new, we do foresee that the nature of our work will in fact shift subtly from merely structuring and documenting finance transactions to actually spending quite a bit more time assisting clients, both the financial institutions as well as the borrowers in understanding uh, basic ESG uh, concepts and in complying with them. Well, I think we have always been aware that the adoption of technology uh, brings about new possibilities and, and avenues for business. 
And the Ellen Glendale Network has always taken a proactive stance towards technological uh, adoption because we understand the important role it, it drives, uh, it plays, sorry, in, in driving innovation. And in doing so, uh, this has afforded us the ability to work on groundbreaking transactions in the financial markets and also venture to areas like fintech, uh, cryptocurrency and the like. So our clients do like the fact that we are always cognizant of the shifts in the market and they often come to us for advice regarding the legal implications of utilizing technology as part of their transactions. Uh, in so far as how it's changed the way we've worked, um, I guess, you know, we've always had a very robust IT infrastructure. So the technology uh, was already there, but ironically, it, it actually took the pandemic to basically make the clients and the industry as a whole, I guess, more aware of the possibilities inherent in, in leveraging technology. Uh, for instance, it made the clients more accepting of concepts like having virtual uh, meetings, using AI programs to carry out due diligence exercises, and using electronic signatures uh, for closings. So in some cases, the ability to work remotely did actually increase our efficiency because, for example, our team members didn't have to commute uh, you know, one, two hours every day in traffic. And uh, it's interesting that um, clients and counterparties, even now, continue to request virtual meetings due to the ease and efficiency by which we can meet and uh, sort things out, even when it is possible to meet in person. And we've also seen a huge increase in work in certain areas, for example, FinTech, but also regulatory advice on the use of electronic documentation signatures. So Alan Glattel as a whole is continuing to explore new systems and capabilities that will assist us to maintain our edge and to maintain the quality of our services to clients going forward.